Team Hard Life Captain Albert Zatucci bringing you another video on how to make a purchase and keep it within reason. A lot of times you have 10, 15, maybe $20 burning a hole in your pocket. When you go into a taco shop, because you've got some free time to go wet a couple of lines or two, you're always going to ask the question of what's a good leader, what's the bait, and what size weight should I be using? Now, a lot of that is self-explanatory because you already do some fishing, so you know what kind of weight you want to be using. You already kind of know that, okay, if I go too heavy, I can't get a good of a cast, or I'm casting too early or too late. A lot of times, if you're using too light of a weight, you'll cast too late if you're trying to cast straight out. If you're using too heavy a weight, you're casting too far to the right, and you're not getting very good distance. So that answer normally would come from me. A lot of these shops will sit there and try to push you on a weight that may not be in your best interest. With the weight, the best way to look at it is you're going to be fishing with it, not us. So what is the best weight you know that you're comfortable with throwing? Once you have that in your selection, say it's a 3, 4, or even a 1 ounce, it doesn't really matter as long as you're comfortable with throwing it and you're, you're fine with that. Now the next thing to do is to choose a style of leader. There's many leaders that will have one hook or other leaders that will have two hooks. One of the main things you do when you do get a leader wherever you purchase it from is to test it. And normally what I like to do is I'll grab it by the hook or the snap swivel and the main line and I'll put some pressure on it. And by pressure, it, you should be able to tell that, hey, you're putting enough in there and that should not come apart. And you'll want to test every, every joint of the leader to make sure that it doesn't slip and or come undone. Because a lot of times, leaders are made or designed by machines. However, some shops will actually handcraft the leaders for you and you get a lot better return on those because, say for example, our life's made in tackle. We like to make them all by hand and we're also fishermen so we know what we're looking for. But, you know, at the same time, you may not always be able to make it in here, but there's other tackle shops along the Gulf Coast that do supply the same kind of tackle. Or even at Walmart Academy, you can find your double drops and single drop leaders. Just be sure to test them because that is the main thing why people lose fish. The other thing about it is you have leaders with snap swivels on them, like this, for your hook. The bad thing about these is that when they decide to go, you really won't know until it happens. And a lot of times this little metal piece right here will open up and you'll lose your catch. A lot of people will buy leaders with nothing but snap swivels on them and then interchange their hook. That's a good thing, but at the same time too, they change out their hooks because they know they're bad. You won't ever know these are bad unless you're closing it down and you notice that it, it breaks off or it, it falls apart in your hand. Other than that, you won't know until you actually got a fish on. So take care in, in choosing the style of leader you're going to go with. A real good leader or snap swivel to go with would be like a Roscoe type or a Coast Lock, which would be similar to this one, and obviously a smaller style. The smaller ones are very good as well. That's a 500 pound rated snap swivel there. Now, getting back to the leader, you can purchase multiple types of double drops. They'll range anywhere from a couple of dollars up to maybe five dollars. This one goes from $5.25 to $5.75 depending on where you purchase it. Now with the double hooks on it, means we get to put double the type of bait on there. A lot of times people will throw, say, two pieces of shrimp, which is fine, and you can catch two fish and or you can catch up to two fish at a time, and sometimes two different types of species of fish. Now, once you got your leader situated on what you want to buy or how you want to fish, that will lead you up to your next question, what type of bait to buy. You can buy shrimp, crab, squid, and all types of dead baits. Now, one of the baits that our team, Team Hard Life, really prefer are the fish bites when we're throwing bottom baits for your red drum, trout, flounder, sheephead. Um, we've caught pup sharks and even sharks up to five foot, we've done cobia, jack crevel, and all types of fish using the fish bite flavors. Now, to ask me which is my favorite flavor, we don't really have a favorite flavor as at fishing, 
every day the bite will change. There's a lot of times you can use the same bait over and over and, and be very lucky. For us, it, we haven't really found a bait that we can use over and over other than baits for shark fishing. There's, that's a whole nother monster. I don't want to get go into that one, but it will come, so stay tuned for that. Now, on the, the fish bites, a lot of people will ask us, well, what flavors do y'all use? Now, here's our actual fishing box that we use and when we go out as a team. And as you can tell, it's kind of disorganized, but we've got, you know, your strips and crab flavor, the chartreuse, power line shrimp, got your flesh pink shrimp, electric chicken shrimp, and empty package. We go through them quite a bit, and then flesh pink shrimp. What we like to do as well, excuse me, is we'll keep our shrimp flavors together and I'm going to show you something else with you as well because with these baits you cannot get them wet. Here's a power line crab, electric chicken crab, flesh pink crab, and a chartreuse crab. And then as you can tell we've got multiple double drops and then we even got your three-way redfish rigs. Uh, we got a long and a short drop that we'll also use depending if we're throwing live bait, dead bait, and or we figure out that they're not hitting on the fish bites. Which is very rare but it does happen. Now. One of the tricks that we have learned is that you got to keep them out of the sun. You can't have them getting in contact with too much heat. But you can normally get these packages for anywhere from $5.75 up to $6.99 a pack. So with your leader in that same range, your bait in that same range, and then your weight, you're looking to spend about 15 bucks. Now with that is, I've seen where these bags of fish bites have actually equaled about five pounds of shrimp when we're using dead bait. With that note, if you're looking to go and do quite a bit of fishing and say more than just half an hour, a couple of hours, or you know half the day, these fish bites would be a very good investment into making the money that you're going to spend that day last a lot longer. If you're using nothing but dead bait, it can go by very, very quickly if there's a lot of bait fish in action that day. But pay attention to the bait fish too, because in certain areas we have also seen that the bait fish will be an indicator that there's no big fish in the area. If there's big fish in the area, the bait fish will disappear going into hiding and the big fish will move in. And that's normally when your bait will stop and you'll start catching bigger fish, reds, drum, uh, your trout, sheephead, and flounder, and you know, the big keeper table sized fish that you're looking for. Now, we're fishing out in the surf, you're gonna catch all of those intermittent all day long kind of deal. In the bays, we've seen it where it's more of that nature that the bait fish will disappear and you'll catch bigger fish. Now, one of the beautiful things about this bait is too, we like to stage it in our, in our, our bins. What we'll do is we'll get all of our shrimp flavors. Okay, with having so many different kind of bait, to choose from and so forth, one of the things we've discovered is you gotta keep your fish bites dry. If they get wet on you, it's like bubble gum. They get real slippery, real slimy, and they start basically reacting to the water. And the water is what gets them to start putting out their scent and so forth. Now, you don't want that to happen prematurely, so what we like to do, and the reason you'll see a lot of these only have one strip is because we've already done this on our last trip but we ran out of bite. That was probably why this one was empty because we already had them pre-cut in here and what we do is we'll dig all the different flavors out of one bag. But we also make sure to keep them all within the same flavor we're looking for. For example, when we stage our baits on our, our hooks that we're using the double drop, we're gonna use the shrimp flavor all in one bag. The crab flavors all in one bag. And so I'm going to give you a quick example of what, what I mean by that. Even though these are all shrimp, you notice they're all different colors. They're not going to really have the same color for the same flavor. Since they're all different, but I know they're shrimp flavor, I'm going to keep them in the same bag. So what I like to do is I like to pre-cut them in the sizes that we're going to be using while we're out there. That's going to be another thing you got to pay attention to trying to set your, your your baits up in time of season, you'll also see that, um, say during the winter. During the winter, fish will also get to a point where there's so many of them in the bay, such as black drum, that they go into a scavenging mode. 
and when they're in scavenging mode, we've seen that a nice big chunky bait is not what they're looking for. They'll be looking for the smallest piece of bait that you can put on a hook, and we've caught a lot of fish doing it in that sense too. So depending on time of season, you gotta take that in consideration. Right now, the water's starting to warm back up for us, so when we go out, we're gonna be using a little bit bigger pieces of bait. Normally, we'll like to use them about two, two and a half inches on our bait sizes for the fish bites. So we'll pre-cut our baits. And even then too, when some are a few different sizes, we'll match them all up because even the littlest piece ends up being used later on. What we like to do with those small pieces is if we're fishing for kingfish, we'll use Zabinki rigs. That Zabinki rig will also be put into play here because sometimes the water is murky and they won't be hitting on the site of the, the Zabinki rig moving up and down. However, they'll go on the scent that they will follow. So what we also will do is make smaller baits as such and I'll also be showing you how we set that up. Now that we've got our shrimp flavors, and basically now, here's another beautiful thing about it. Instead of having so many bags in your tackle bag, when you open your box or your bag up, we like to use a box. Um, if you're in a high wind area, these bags will fly out. So while you're at your house or in your shop or wherever you like to rig your fishing gear up, this is something to, to pay attention to and to this is something you'll want to prep your gear with. Instead of allowing more debris to fly out and become trash or litter in your favorite fishing spot, leave it at home or throw it in the trash. Do not trash your fishing areas. Now, I've got shrimp. Now that I know that, I already know this is electric chicken, this is my flesh pink, and here's my power line. I know what those colors are, and I know it's a shrimp flavor, but me, me putting it into a shrimp bag, I know that those are all shrimp flavors. And even then too, these smaller pieces like this are very important because when you're trying to catch bait, you're going to need them. So, we'll also put those into a smaller bag. So that way, at the same time too, when you're out fishing, your hands do get wet. Or you handle a fish and then you run out of bait, so you need to go grab more bait. Be sure to kind of dry off your hands a little bit. Everybody will carry around a towel. I normally wear my towel. <laughs> Come home pretty stinky sometimes. So, I've got my bait, my bait fish bites and I've got my regular fish bites for my bigger hook. Okay, so now that I've done my shrimp and I can throw these away, I'm gonna go back and do my crab. So over here, I've got my flesh pink crab, my electric chicken crab, power lime crab, and I've even got the little strips for the crab flavor and chartreuse. And then we got our chartreuse and the long strips. These longer lasting flavors here are a great deal. Um, I'm not going to cut up my strips yet because these are already all pretty much cut up for us. But my, or my chartreuse crab here, I will cut up. So again, the same thing. Here's the, the other thing you're going to have to pay attention to though. And this is going to be a little harder because I, yes, I did explain that, that by putting all the same flavors into the bag, you're going to know that which on switch. However, your power lime and your chartreuse are very similar. Once they get wet, you will be very hard to tell them apart. So, if you want on that flavor, you can, or this color, you can actually keep it separated with other flavors that are in that same group. Um, you'll have your flesh, your pink, uh, your chartreuse, and even orange, and you can keep those separated. But for these exotic colors right here that have the two or three, you can combine those all day long as long as you keep your shrimp in one bag and your crab in the other. And we got a small piece there, so I can start there. You've got your electric chicken. And your flesh in pink. Now, as you'll see, I'll, I'll put them all together too because I try to work as quickly as possible so that way we can rig our gear you know not just spend all day cutting them one at a time You're cutting several of them at a time 
will allow you to work a little quicker. And even then, see, things work out for a reason. And you'll learn that about us. Everything we do has a rhyme or a reason, and it's not just because it's a coincidence. Okay. Now, since these are the fish strips, or the, the strips of the chartreuse flavor, I can mix those with these, even though they look similar, they're not. These are more of a triangle piece and these are a rectangle piece. Because of that, I can put them in my crab flavor because I know these are all crab. But because of that triangle piece, and vice of the rectangle, I know this is a chartreuse crab. It's just when you're rigging your stuff up. And again, my little baits for my when I'm going out to catch my uh, Fake fish for kingfishing or anything else. Now I've got my baits for bait fish and then my baits for big fish. Here's the other thing we have discovered, and I don't know if this is anywhere else but here, but we have seen where if you use the same color of fish bite on your top and bottom hook, it can actually reduce the amount of fish you catch. Now again, this is only that has happened to us, and it's not just happened once or twice. So when you try to buy the fish bites, try to buy at least two different flavors. Um, like I said, we've got this crab and shrimp here, and what we'll do on our leader too is we'll stage them a certain way. Obviously, this is your top portion that you connect to your leader, and this is going to be something else we're going to get into in a later video. Right here, I'm using 100-pound Jerry Brown as my top shot, but you'll notice there is no knot. We've done a hollow core splice back in on itself, and then we've attached it to a quick-release clip. Now, these quick-release clips can be attached and get your leader in play. Now, with your top hook here, you can add your shrimp flavor, and that's another thing we do. Just put shrimp on top and crab on bottom. So you'll choose a flavor. And what we like to do is we'll like to fold it over, and then we'll place our hook right through it. Now be careful when sending it through because it's a little, it's pretty tough to get it through. It's not just going to push right through. When you start pushing through and you feel that pressure of where it's at, you can move your fingers around it so you don't hook yourself. Now, I've got my bait on there, and you notice I'm pushing it toward the back. I'll get to that in just a second. Now, I've got my shrimp on there. I'm going to go to my crab. And what I like to do is use two different colors of two different baits as well. So now I'm going to throw electric chicken crab on the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing. Push it through, and as it starts to fold, you'll see where my fingers are safe. Because you definitely don't want to get a hook in you when you're just out there fishing. So now that I've got it on there, what I like to do too is I like to use shrimp. On the shrimp, what I like to do is I'll pinch right here using my nail and I'll break that off. And then on the head, right behind the eyes, right where the, the horn comes out, I'll squeeze right there. And as you see, I've left all the brain matter there. That's just more scent for the fish to find. And at that point, I'll come up and I'll divide my shrimp in half. Normally, it's these two segments and these four over here. So I'll push right there and break it apart. On my top hook, it really doesn't, know, it doesn't matter which part of the shrimp goes where, but I always like to put a piece of shrimp on my top and bottom hooks. Here's, here's a, a little thing I've seen where I've seen a lot of improvement as well is when you put your shrimp on the tail end, you'll notice that you've got your skinny end and your big end. Put your skinny end first. That way, the chunkier portion is right by your barb. And as you notice, I've left it right there to where the barb is kind of exposed, but not really, instead of pushing it all the way down. This has 
worked very good for us to catch everything. And we'll actually share some pictures of some different catches here pretty soon. And this is a great way to spend about 15 to 20 dollars and to go out and have a good time. And then in the bottom, you'll throw your weight on. Again, that is all personal preference of what you like to use. And you're ready to go. This will allow you to go out and catch and have a good time while fishing. You can take the kids out and they will catch everything from small fish to big fish. And it is fishing at the end of the day, so remember that. Now, here's another thing too. At the end of the day, if you buy a leader that has hooks on it that don't come off, or you're gonna move from one area to another because you have found out that uh, you're not doing very well, but your buddy called you and said they're efficient getting over there. So to store your rig is a very efficient way to do it. That way it doesn't get all tangled up. What I'll do is I'll bring my line behind my reel, right here, but in front of the rod, and then I'll tighten it up. And what that'll do is that'll keep your hooks in place, but always uh, in a spot where you know they are. They're not gonna be hooked up here or hooked over there, come undone, and then at the end of the day, or you move from one position to the other, you don't know where they're at. Here's another thing too, you can bring your weight around like that, and that'll actually hold it in place as well. So now you can stack multiple rods together, and if they shake or anything, they're not gonna have the hooks failing around and hooking each other or tangling up, and you have a tangled mess. So, this is a quick way and very inexpensive way to go out and enjoy yourself while fishing. This is gonna be one of many of the different types of fishing techniques we're gonna teach. So if you have any comments or questions, feel free to post them down below and we'll get to them as soon as we can. This is Team Hard Life Captain Albert Sertucci, checking out. Y'all have a good one.